Hi, everybody, and welcome. It's Friday, so it must be our weekly show, Onwards and Upwards, everything that a nurse needs to know to come and live and work properly in the United States. My name is Tanya Friedman, I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Kinetics USA, and I have with me Cha. Hi, Cha. Hello. Welcome. Thank and you. And Ivan. Hi, Ivan. Ivan, we don't hear you. You see, I think you're on mute, Ivan. I think Ivan's having a little technical hitch, but we'd like to welcome you from all over the world watching today. Um, Onwards and Upwards is our weekly show, as I said, which it gives you all the information that you need to know about coming to live and work in the United States. And our uh, show today, the topic today is living and working as an RN in Texas. Both Char and can Ivan are working. Char, Ivan, can you hear us now? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Or? Yes, good. We, we're good now. Okay. Um, so today we are going to be speaking to Char and Ivan about their experience. We're going to be finding out, first of all, where is Texas exactly on the map? We're going to be talking about what's fun to do there, what's the climate like. We're going to be talking about housing. We're going to be talking about transportation. We're going to be talking about the cost of living. We're going to be talking about the taxes. So lots of really important and interesting things to hear about from both Ivan and Char's experience. Um, if you are watching now all over the world, please put into the chat your name and where you're watching from. We love to, um, to see all our viewers that are watching from all over the world. And feel free to ask Ivan and Char any questions. We can get through as many questions as you like, and they will be happy to share their experience about Texas and what that's like to live there. So if we turn to our success path, every show we look at the success path. Um, and what, I'm not going to go through that in detail. You can find this on the Kinetics USA website. This is the process for coming to the United States. Um, Char and Ivan are both at number seven. Enjoy and prosper. Okay, so Ivan and Char, let's get started. Uh, Desiree is watching from London. Welcome, Desiree. Um, so let's get started. So Let's first talk uh, a little bit about yourself. So before we talk about Texas, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Let's start with Char. Ladies first. Hello. Uh, good morning, Tanya. Hi, Ivan. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Hi, My name is Char Lungayan, and I'm from the Philippines. I've been a nurse for um, over seven years now, um, three years in the Philippines, and I also worked in Saudi Arabia for two years there. And I started my nursing career here in the U.S. Um, back in July 2019. So I started in Kentucky. My first hospital experience in there is like two years. Actually, I just like finished my two years there this year. And I'm pretty much new in Texas, to be honest. I just moved in here for like two, two, two months ago, like October. So yeah, it's been like, but so far my experience here in Texas as like newcomer, it's so good, the climate, I love it, people and everything. I love it in Texas so far, so. Fabulous, <laughs> so that's gonna be a really interesting discussion today because Ivan, you've been in Texas for longer than two months, correct? Oh, I've been here since 2018, three okay, years. So, so a long time. So that's going to be interesting because it will be different perspective. Again, before we talk about Texas specifically, Ivan, give us just a little bit of background about yourself. Oh, my name is Ivan Abarido. I'm from Sambuanga City, Philippines. So I've been here in the United States since 2016. And I've been a nurse since 2005, worked in the Philippines for six years and uh, worked in uh, Abu Dhabi for four years. So basically waited for 10 years to be able to come to the united states due to retrogression during that time and i started working in new mexico um in a nursing home and eventually moved to a hospital and then uh, moved to texas in may of 2018. okay so ivan's been there for a long time and it was a long journey it sounds like ivan to get to this point but both Cha and Ivan are now living the American dream in Texas. It's a very popular destination. Many nurses 
um, all over the world are interested in Texas, but sometimes they don't know that much about it. So that's where this today's show is really hopefully going to be very helpful for many people watching, where you're going to learn a lot more about what it's actually like to live in Texas. What are the good things? What are the maybe not so good things? Because nowhere is perfect. There are, you know, no place is uh, utopia. So we're going to start talking now specifically about Texas. And if you have questions about Texas, please feel free to put that in the chat. I see we have uh, Saidi is watching from Tanzania. Glenda's watching from the UAE. So um, please put your questions into the chat for Ivan and Char. Um, and we're going to start now moving forward and talking about Texas. So most people don't even know where the, on, the, on the map where Texas is um, of the United States. So if we look at the map, it's kind of right there in the middle. Um, it's a very big state. And I think a lot of people don't actually realize that, uh, that Texas is such a big place. So Cha and, and Ivan, tell us for starters, why did you choose Texas? And what did you know about Texas before you actually came to live there? Let's start with you again, Char. Um, um, actually, that's the original plan. That's one of my American dream before like going here in the US because I have a aunt in here. She lives in Odessa. So um, that's the basic plan. But uh, the only thing is like my agency just have the facility in Kentucky. So I have to like move in there for, I mean, I have to like start my American journey there for like two years. And then I actually, I've heard a lot of good things in here in Texas, because they told me that the weather is good. It feels like it's in the Philippines because it's not that too, like when there's like a winter in here, it's not too cold. They said that because back in Kentucky, we also have like four seasons there. And last year, the winter is not so good. It's like, I've been traumatized actually, especially when driving. So it's not that so good back there. But like here in Texas, the weather is good. I've heard a lot of good things, places. And then especially it's very diverse because there's a lot of nationalities in the in here, which is a good thing because you're going to like learn from their culture, their language, and also like um, the foods because basically we have everything in here. When you're craving with Mexican food, Filipino food, everything, it's just like, you know, like 30 minutes away, 10 minutes away. You don't have to drive that far. So pretty much it's. So a lot of positives, a lot of positives. Yeah, a lot of positives. Since I'm new one, like a newcomer in here. Mm -hmm. So, so far I'm enjoying the life here in Texas. Okay, fabulous. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for sharing, Cha. Ivan, what about you? What made you choose Texas and what did you know about Texas before you came here? Oh, I mean, uh, Texas is, uh, it came from New Mexico, so basically it's just a neighboring uh, state. Um, you see the map, it's just like the right of New Mexico. So uh, what I knew before coming to Texas is I know that there's no state tax in Texas. Um, Weather-wise, it's uh, similar to New Mexico and um, came from Abu Dhabi, so we're, we're like used to hot weather so it's yeah. just it's more uh, humid in texas than in new mexico okay. and um what made us come here is um we were just like trying to apply and um one of our, my classmates was also living here yeah, they moved, moved here coming from new york and um, we were just looking at the um uh the hospitals and opportunities mm -hmm. and then we just tried to apply and basically the good thing in texas is they, they consider all of your nursing experiences when it comes to salary so when we were in new mexico and i was in a in a nursing home and i moved to a hospital so basically our salary was entry level and they did not consider our um, experiences from abu dhabi and the philippines so when we learned that in Texas it, it is considered, so that's why we, we made a move to come here then. Okay, so it sounds like there were a lot of positive things as well that you'd heard about Texas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, many people, many international nurses don't realize that Texas is huge. It's, it's, a, it's a massive state. They say everything is bigger in Texas. So it is a really big place. And different places in Texas can be a little different from each other. It's not to say that every place in Texas is exactly the same. Can you share with us 
where specifically you live in Texas and how that might be different to maybe other towns or cities in Texas. Huh? Yeah, I'm currently living here in Plano, Texas. Mm -hmm. So it's like a northern part of uh, Dallas. It's like 30 minutes away from the downtown Dallas. So um, I think the it differs is the like it's really like plain it's not like really congested it's like a city but it's not like a city city kind of location mm -hmm. which i like because when i like try to Ooh. just roam around in downtown dallas because i'm not really that like pro driver i consider myself self still like a new newbie one driving in here so what i like about it is just like um it's not too congested in terms of like driving. And then we have like a huge roads in here. Mm -hmm. So it's like three lanes like that. And then um, weather as well, weather wise, I love it so far. So like what I've said, I'm still like new, I'm still trying to like roam around like other cities because I've just gone through like that downtown Dallas. That's the first, uh, the first, um, place that I've been to here in Texas since I arrived here last October. And the place is nice as well. It's just that like, it's too crowded since it's like downtown. And also like some neighboring city, like in Allen, it's also like a nice place there. Um, but pretty much it's like, just like the traffic so far. That's what I compare. Okay, so that so that's good to know. How is where you're living now different? I think you said it was your aunt who lives in Odessa. How is Odessa different to what where you're living now? Well, in Odessa, it's more of like countryside. So like um, the 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 way of living there is very laid back compared in here. So here in Plano, it's pretty busy. People are very active. And then back there in Odessa, it's just they have that laid back kind of lifestyle there. So okay. that's all I observed. Okay. So so differences within Texas itself in terms of the lifestyle. Ivan, what about you? Tell us about where you live specifically and what you like about that area. Oh, I mean, uh, welcome to DFW area chat. So I just live nearby in Fort Worth, oh, um, 45, yeah. 45 minutes away from Plano. So it's uh, DFW accordingly is the, the biggest met metropolitan uh, area in, uh, I would say, United States. Mm -hmm. So it's like um, bigger than the Houston metropolitan. So um, we're in Tarrant County, they're in Collin County, and they're, there's Dallas County. So um, Fort Worth, I would say, is more laid back than Plano. Plano is, is more kind of... Uh, uh, what they call this? Uh, they're more. It's more developed. So they have more uh, roads. Actually, they have more tollways. Mm -hmm. um, they have more um, expressways, and um, of course, um, most probably uh, Filipinos would be considering Plano, Frisco in that area at, at this point of time. We ourselves were considering to move to that area because that's where our um. Uh, the fast food Jollibee is Jollibee. Yeah, is oh, exactly. Food, so. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just it just opened last uh, last uh, last year. Yeah, last year during the pandemic. Uh, anyway, compared to other cities, the the most Filipinos are in Houston, and uh, the most Filipino restaurants as well are in Houston. So there would be things that you need to consider, like. If you're in Houston, you consider hurricanes, and if you're in um, the northern Texas, you consider tornadoes. So, yeah, and and that's really everywhere in America because, and not just everywhere in America. I mean, you know, I just want to give a a, um, a call out to everybody who's in the Philippines right now who's experienced this, you know, devastating typhoon. typhoon yeah. yeah, and they are all in our thoughts and prayers. And unfortunately, wherever you are in the world, there's there's going to be something, you know, it's if you, I, I live in California here, there's earthquakes. So, um, you know, there, there's unfortunately always going to be something. 
So it's interesting that you mentioned the different food places. And I see we have Sadie who's watching from Tanzania and Regina who's watching from Nepal. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of um, Filipinos in Texas, but also a lot of other nationalities as well. So certainly very, very multicultural there. Um, okay, so let's talk. We've spoken about the, the climate and both of you um, are saying that you like the climate. Mm -hmm. Ivan, was it what you expected? Because you've been there for longer and you've had um, more experience in the different, with the different seasons. Oh, I mean, the, the, the season here is, uh, what I've said, I mean, uh, it's similar to Abu Dhabi. We came from Abu Dhabi. It's, it's hot and it's humid. In uh, New Mexico, it's hot, but it's dry. So um, Texas, like California, is like uh, very, the, the weather is very unpredictable. It's, you have like, they say you, ha you can have four seasons in a day. So when you woke up, it's so cold. Then at uh, morning time, it, it will become like uh, autumn time. Then in the afternoon, it will become so hot. So it's yeah. just unpredictable the weather and uh last february we experienced one of the worst um uh, snowstorms so it rarely happens yeah it rarely happens but it, it did last february and there were like issues regarding the power outage and i think they are right now like they're trying to fix those issues so that in the future whenever it will happen then they would be able to like address the issues yeah so it, it is it does happen but it's it's more unusual Mm -hmm. when something like that happens in, in a state like Texas. Okay, let's talk about um, what, what, what is it like what to, um, what are the fun things to do in Texas? Okay, I know that um, Texas is a big state. Um, Ivan, you've been there for longer. Have you had any uh, trips or done any fun things in the state itself um, that you can share with us? Oh, fun things, I would say. I mean, it, it, it's not like as fun as other states. Okay. Because in, in other states, it's green. In Texas, it's it's dry. It's like a desert. So uh -huh. mostly, um, uh, you, you'll have fun with the establishments. Like um, you play, uh, go to restaurants, you go and play bowling, you go play basketball. Uh, there are plenty of, since we're not near the beach, so uh, people usually would go to, to lakes. Mm -hmm. So um so they would swim in lakes, um they would like uh, ride the pontoon boats, speed boats, jet skis. So so th those are the things that are usually um done in Texas when during during your off days, but if you have like longer days off then event usually in in the United States then you just take uh, one week off and we go to other states, like we go to California, we go to Oklahoma neighboring city, Arkansas and East Coast. So that's that's the good thing here in the United States. So, and also the airfare is cheap. So, I think that, that that's it. So what? So what is what was your favorite place to visit in the United States so far? I mean, we we like we visited a lot of states. We're we're trying to. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if it's our, if it is our goal to visit all all fifty one states. <laughs> but but so far we we visited the. Um, was probably the most visited states like we've been to california to um we've been to northern california we've been to southern california mm -hmm. and we've been to florida so we've been able to compare both beaches the pacific and the atlantic beaches mm -hmm. and we've been to florida we've roamed around florida we've been to orlando we've been to miami we've been to um uh, clearwater we've been to destin pensacola so and i've been to new york so like yeah, I'm, I'm not sure yet what, what are the other things that we're going to probably target to go. So um, probably uh, South Dakota, so for Mount Rushmore. And I think like I, it, it depends on what what you would like to do, like uh, Filipinos and uh, um, what do they want? Do you just usually want to roam around, like roam around the bigger cities? So yeah. the city series, the United States is so big. It's just so don't... big and so much to see. We just don't get used to it. Like the city series are so big in, in, in area that it looks like a ghost town. It just like just it's big. So I mean we are from the we're, we're from the Philippines. There's like hundreds of millions of Philippines and our place is small. When we go to the city, it's congested. You see a lot of people. And like here, we you go to 
you go to um, Dallas, you don't see a lot of people. I think the only comparable city to the Philippines is New York. Mm -hmm. Los Angeles, San Francisco could even be like a ghost town for us in the Philippines. Then, but but it's nice. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, uh, the, but you really need to have a vehicle to roam around the, the country. Then, and we're we're enjoying it so far. Yeah. No, it's funny that you say that, Ivan, because as you're talking, I'm thinking, I, you know, I was an immigrant myself. I came to the United States 21 years ago mm -hmm. from South Africa. And my father, when he used to come here, he always used to say, where are the people? Where are the people? I don't see the people in the <laughs> cities. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's what my parents and my, my in-laws, because both of them come here every now and then and they get bored because they don't see a lot of people like the philippines yeah. you go out go outside of your house talk to the neighbor uh -huh. so here but, but they are like pros and cons but definitely i mean we are enjoying our stay here in the united states yeah absolutely and char what about you where have you visited in texas or in the surrounding states that you are fun and i think we have some pictures of some of your your trips <laughs> both of you <laughs> yeah um actually i've been to like um also florida chicago new york and also like we we roam around like they're in niagara falls like that so so far um what i'm liking here though in texas um the place that i've been to is like there in downtown dallas we went to the uh it's like more of food tripping really because mm -hmm. Uh, back when I started my American dream, it's like it's away from like Asian markets, um, like Jollibee, like what Ivan is saying, because we're a little bit like deprived about that mm -hmm. because I have to travel like two hours away from my location back there. But here it's just like what I've said, nine minutes, 10 minutes away. So the 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 place that I love in here in Texas where I visited it is um the museum in downtown Dallas. Uh, it's like more of, the, more of their culture, like all the paintings as well. And then some sculptures like that. Cause I, lo I love art as well. I appreciate it. So probably those people who wanted like arts thingy, you can mm -hmm. like go to Dallas. There's a lot of like museum there. And also they also have, if you're more into like um, theme parks like that. There's one here in Arlington. It's the Six Flags over Texas. It's like 45 minutes away from here. So if you're into like roller coaster rides, you will enjoy it in there. And also here in Plano, we have a hot hot air balloon festival, but it'll be on like, the next stop will be like next year, September 2020, 2022. So yeah, that's also an interesting thing to check it out here in our place, like the balloon festival, because they have like fun run, Balloon, uh, hot air balloon festival and then um like more of like eating outside like outdoors like that okay so that's very interesting and i'm sure that joshua from kenya and ellie from mexico are interested to hear things about texas because as i said many nurses hear the name texas but a lot of people don't know much about it and that's where our show onwards and upwards where we showcase every month a different place of the united states you can learn so much about what it's really like to live and work in in a specific state so now you spoke a little bit about being nervous of driving um, and the roads <laughs> yeah. in texas let's yeah. talk about transportation because for many international nurses they don't realize that there are very few places in the united states where you don't have to drive i mean new york necessary. city for example is one but in most places most people actually drive Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about your experience with transportation um, and, um, you know, when I, I know that you both lived in other places before, but talk about specifically in, in Texas, what that's been like. Do you both drive? Do you have cars? Did you have driving lessons? Share with everybody who's watching your experience. Cha. Okay. So, um, so in my case, since I came from other state and then move in here i have to like transfer everything like my driver's license my registration so it's a pretty much a little bit like stressful for me to do that but like um but i already like you know done it everything except for my driver's license because here's the thing they said that um because it's in the middle of the pandemic when i move it in here so i have to get an online for those who are like wanting to transfer from other states to here 
So this is what I did. So I transferred my license. I have to book a um, um, schedule online. But the, the, the earliest that I get will be like next year. So I'm a little bit bothered about that because I still have my Kentucky State uh, driver's license. And mm -hmm. then I think as far as I know, like when I research, I ha just have like 60 days to like process it before I can drive. So I called the DMV about it. And then they said, it, since it's in the middle of the pandemic, just disregard that ruling and then just use your license and wait for your scheduled time for your driver's license to be transferred here in Texas. So I'm still using though my Kentucky driver's license, so it's okay until they like um, transfer it by next year. But my registration, everything is all transferred here in Texas now. So it just a little bit takes uh, time for those who wanted to transfer from other state to here. So you just have to do that so you can like dr drive in Texas legally. Mm -hmm. So the traffic itself, because I came for like, um, like uh i can say like rural rural area there's a huge difference in my driving adjustment because i'm not using to six uh driving in a city so like i've got <laughs> horned many times <laughs> yeah i got horned many times because yeah it's really i'm still like afraid of driving because back in the philippines i'm driving but not like frequently driving i just know how to drive but I consider still myself as newbie driver. So like moving here in Texas, I came from Kentucky and the roads are just like, there's no road. I mean, the traffic there, it's really okay. But coming here in Plano, Texas, it's really <laughs> congested. So city, a lot of traffic lights. Sometimes I'm still confused with the traffic lights actually. So I got horned with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I'm, I'm getting used to it though with that, that two months of staying in here I get used to it the traffic and um, but some drivers are really nice though in here some are not but yeah I think it's all over though but it's just the driving um, if you're new like me I just recommend because we have uber here we have lyft if you're like for instance going to the airport just wanted to travel somewhere better to like take uber especially with me who is a very new new driver because if you're gonna drive downtown it'll be like bumper to bumper and it's very um, for me it's stressful especially for those who are new driver so just my advice it's not like take uber every time you're going from one place to another just those times that it's like on downtown better to take uber or like lift so, so it'll be lesser yeah lesser yeah. stress and you know yeah <laughs> it'll be con uh, the, like convenient as well <laughs> no it can be very stressful if you're not used to it yeah. Ivan what about you on the transportation um did you always drive beforehand oh there's Ivan his first time in Texas <laughs> <laughs> Um, did you did you drive beforehand? What was the whole experience like for you on the on the transportation side? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I used to drive, and I, we, we we have a car in Abu Dhabi, UAE, so we're we're driving there and um, the Philippines as well. So um, there there are public transportations here. I mean, uh, in my first few days, I have no choice but to use the the bus. Mm -hmm. But but the good thing in the United States is everything is. Um, easy to get it's convenient like um, I've heard in other countries it would take you years be before you would be able to get a driver's license so here in the United States so if you have a driver's license in the Philippines when I was in New Mexico I basically just brought my driver's license I I gave it to them gave it to the registration and I I took the exam and uh, we came here like March 1 2016 in March 15 I already got my driver's license so uh, it, it's not difficult so after like few days i was already able to get my car so basically everything is easy uh to do here everything's easy to process but definitely ev everybody like needs a car here except if you live in new york like right? probably the only uh, place that you need to i uh, bet that you don't need a car is new york because it's very traffic congested and it's not practical to bring a car because like the the parking are so expensive so driving wise, I, I'm, I'm not stressed. So it's probably me and Chad, we have different uh, different experiences. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, 
if if you drive in the Philippines, then especially if you are in, a, in the capital country, then you'll you'll see the difference. Uh, it's stressful to drive in the Philippines because it's very traffic, and the drivers there are basically they just don't, they just don't have a driver's etiquette like here. The people here are courteous. That's, true. that's a good that's point. Uh, that, that that's the people here are courteous. Basically, people here respects the lane. Mm -hmm. There are some who are who don't, but I mean, majority does. So, mm -hmm. um, so what happens is uh, the traffic is controlled. It's it's indeed tra still a traffic, but if you compare it to the Philippines, definitely it's very far. Because in the Philippines, like all of the the cars would try to congest the yeah. the road, and they, they don't they don't <laughs> respect the lane. So it's probably one lane. There's two cars together, or I... so in in three lanes, there's like ten cars together. So it's very congested. So. It's it's very different. I, I I like the driving here. The people are very nice, uh, courteous. When when you, you go in a in a stop sign, everybody stops, and everybody would give time for uh, the cars to to cross. So yeah. that, that's the, that's the big difference. So. It is it is definitely different. I'm just thinking of the time last time I was in the Philippines. I've never been so scared in my life. Is driving. <laughs> In the traffic in the Philippines, but people in the United States, by and large, are very law-abiding mm -hmm. um, when they're driving. So they follow the rules here, and and that's yeah, everything. Yeah. I mean, I live in California, and, and it's the same here. I know, yeah, but, no. yeah. So both of you spoke about the the community in Texas that it's very multicultural. Obviously, both of you are, are from the Philippines, um, and as we know, there are a lot of, of people, not just nurses, a lot of people from the Philippines that are in Texas. But there are also a lot of people from all over the world, from other nationalities. How multicultural has your experience been? What have you seen um, in terms of uh, diversity and and uh, a, a bigger community in Texas? Ivan, let's start with you first on this one. Oh, I mean, I, I would say like um, Cha would be the one who's, who could like um, uh, tell tell more about it because in Plano, the the, mm -hmm. the in Plano and Frisco, the um, community is just so diverse, and I just actually recently experienced it when I when I work uh, in a certain hospital in Dallas. It's uh, where I work at now. It's uh, the, the biggest uh, working emergency department. So it's the biggest, no, not biggest, sorry, the, the busiest emergency department in the United States. And that's where I experience uh, cultural diversity. Like um, there are basically nurses like from maybe like all countries, not, not like I'm exaggerating, but from all <laughs> countries, like um, uh, it depends on the unit. So there's uh, mm -hmm. like ICU would be uh, coming from India, Indian nurses, then uh, the CCU, PCU are coming from China, the so Chinese nurses, then the observation unit are Korean nurses, then um, the dialysis are um, Mexican nurses or Hispanic nurses, then Filipino nurses are in the observation unit, then so basically, I mean, you, you you just see diversity in that in that place and i would just say wow i mean i, I didn't know that there's just like a lot of nurses coming from uh, uh, other countries because I, I haven't experienced it in uh in fort worth like it's only in in, in dallas and that but i mean it i don't know with the other hospitals but our hospital is a uh, county hospital it's huge so uh and but I, i've seen in uh frisco and mm -hmm. in Plano, that's why we're also like looking at that place. Uh, maybe we can move there in the future because like uh, the, the the community is very diverse. So when, when you see there's like a lot of uh, Asians in the place and, and there's a, a, a lot of um, uh, Hispanics and uh, like all, all, all the races are there. So so it's nice when uh, it's nice to live in a community where you yeah, experience all of those. Yeah, and, and I think you're right. There are some places that are more diverse than others mm -hmm. in Texas. Some hospitals might be more diverse than others, but they certainly, it is a state where there is a lot of diversity. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested in coming to uh, to Texas um, or any other state in the United States, please go onto the Kinetics USA website um, and apply. We have many, many opportunities all over the, the United States and many, many opportunities in all different places in Texas. So our team are standing by to help you. Um, and uh, if, especially if you have your NFLEX, we can pretty much have you interview right away. 
Cha, tell us about your experience with diversity in Texas. I know yeah. you've been a short time. <laughs> yes, yeah, so far though, um, Ivan is very right about that because here in my place in Plano, like you just go out on outside your apartment or your home, you're gonna see like diversity. There's like um, from Africa, there's from India, there's from Asia, like Vietnamese, Taiwanese, Korean, Filipinos. So pretty much like most of the that nationalities are in here. So I think this is like a good state for those like international nurses who can like start like a like a brand new started in the U.S. It'll be like easier for them, especially if there's like on that certain place that they're going to there is like um they can adjust in way of like adjustment and then transition like for me here um there's a lot of like filipino communities in there in here as well and what i've learned as well is in our hospital yeah it's very diverse we um like different nationality like it it don't matter which area you can see them like in one one like one floor to another you can see like the diversity so and the good thing about that like what i've said um you you learn more of their culture and then their language just like the simple like sentences because we have patients as well which like needs some translator because like this place is really diverse so in our hospital we have like a translation line and I just lo love learning like other cultures like that. It's really like fascinating, interesting for us to learn like new things, new court, I mean, culture from other nationalities. Yeah, it can be really fun and really interesting mm -hmm. to hear about other people's backgrounds. So I see we have Vanessa who's watching from the Philippines. What would you say to Vanessa about how it's helpful to come to a place with diversity? How is it helpful to be surrounded, if, you, if you're from the Philippines, for example, to be surrounded by other Filipinos? Why Why is that a big plus? Um, uh, I would say it would be easier for you to adjust um, mm -hmm. when, when you have like co-Filipino workers and uh, you would be like at first, of course, when you would be like scared um, uh, during the first few days. But if you have like Filipino nurses to ask from and we'll be able to reassure you and we'll be able to guide you with everything like not only the workplace then definitely that's that's quite reassuring and i'm, I'm saying that like filipinos are known to be assertive but yeah much better if there's more filipino mm -hmm. in, your, in your workplace then yeah yeah so it really just can be helpful mm -hmm. that you are surrounded by other people who come from the same background and mm -hmm. that you can help each other and pay it forward with for anybody who's newly arriving and I see Honey is, is tagging Zizi. Um, I love that, uh, Honey. Please tag your friends. Ivan and Char are paying it forward for every board, for all the nurses who are watching all over the world um, by sharing their experience. So thank you for tagging your friends. Um, and please do so because we really, that's the, the purpose of Onwards and Upwards. It's just nurses helping nurses. So we're so grateful to Ivan and Char for sharing your experience. Um, okay, let's move on to food. Let's talk a little bit about food. I think, uh, who was it? Ivan, I think, said you traveled two hours. To, oh, no, Char. Uh, it's hours. me, yeah. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> yeah, for the, like that Asian store. Because mm -hmm. um, back there, I think it's not that more diverse on where I came from compared to here in Texas. So, like, I enjoyed really, like, going to grocery shop, especially, like, Asian markets. We have, like, tons of it in here in Texas like there's different asian markets so if you're craving with asian foods as well there's a lot of like restos it's just near like 10 minutes away 20 minutes away and also filipino and filipino restaurants especially for the filipinos in here like me who's been like craving for filipino foods <laughs> and especially the jollibee <laughs> yeah of but, you know because back in the philippines i don't really like appreciate it because it's just like near to our house mm -hmm. but when moving here in in the united states that's one of the things that you'll realize that you just neglected back in the philippines but in mm -hmm. here it'll be like more important because there's just like some places that there's branch of jollibee mm -hmm. so 
that's one thing <laughs> as well as like mexican food everything all the like it, the foods like the people the food it's all diverse so yeah. that's the good thing here so, in so Texas. you can get a little bit of home and you can get that that uh difference or that diversity ivan yeah. what is your favorite american food to eat oh i mean the 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 most famous uh Texan food is the Texas barbecue. So, ah, yeah. Like, um, we, we roadhouse barbecue. Yeah, I mean, uh, Chad was right. I mean, we even travel longer than Chad when we were in New Mexico. We travel like for us to be able to go to the nearest Jollibee, it's 10 hours, 10 hours <laughs> travel. And, um, but yeah, for, for a Filipino store or nation store, it's like three hours away. Mm -hmm. So, um, basically, you can experience or you can try to eat anything you can eat like any type of food around the world in in texas so i mean uh, like right now i mean like the philippines of course we're just we're just forced to eat what we have so filipino food is filipino food when you eat other delicacies like when you eat like uh japanese food it's so expensive so but when you come to the united states and work in texas or anywhere else then hey i mean for, for lunch, we'll go to Korean. Oh, for dinner, we'll go to Japan. And okay, for... Um, uh, from anywhere around the world. Food from yeah. anywhere around the world. <laughs> Breakfast tomorrow, let's try African food. And uh, <laughs> next day, then let's try uh, Brazilian, then Vietnamese, yeah. uh, everything, basically. Yeah, that, that's the good thing here. Um, mm -hmm. And the um, salary-wise, you, you can afford to... So Just yeah, enjoy, so that, enjoy the food, yeah. So that's important. You 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 are able to afford it. I mean, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So Daniel, who's watching from Uganda, you can get food from Africa, and um, Marisol from Oman. There's lots of of uh, different diversity. Alex is saying thank you for sharing your experience in the great USA. Ramelan is watching from the Philippines. Ramelan, I hope you are okay and safe. I know so many people have been um, evacuated and it's been such a difficult time in the Philippines right now. So I'm glad that you're finding today interesting um, and please take care and, and stay safe. Um, so, um, and Godfrey's from the Philippines, take care, Godfrey. So, um, Cha and Ivan, let's talk a little bit about housing because one of the things that um, many um, nurses want to know about is what is the housing like? Um, talk to us a little bit about, I don't know, you know, what your situation is, if you have, uh, if you are renting, if you have been able to buy a house. Um, I know, Char, you, you're just new to Texas. Can you share with a little, with everybody who's watching a little bit about the housing situation where you are living? Mm, yeah, right okay. now, right now I'm living in, a, in an apartment. So um, the renting in here, um, it's like one uh, 1000 100 that's uh like a 1100 um bucks the payment um per month but it's um the inclusion is like the water and then the sewage as well and then also it depends really how is your like consumption electricity it's like 60 to 70 dollars is what i'm paying every month and internet is like it depends which plan you're going to pay because what we have in here is like the unlimited one so it's like 50 bucks per month so pretty much i can say like the electricity in here compared where i came from in kentucky it's way like cheaper mm, yeah interesting mm -hmm. it's way cheaper because back there i'm paying like especially when it's like the regular um season i'm paying like you know like 100 box or 110 something like that it range like that but here it's just like 60 to 70 bucks so there's a huge difference as well mm. with electricity so all i can say like it's electricity it's way cheaper than where i came from oh so, that's interesting i didn't mm -hmm. know that okay. yeah and and char i know that you mentioned your family live in odessa mm -hmm. how, is, how does the housing compare in odessa to what you experience where you are well, my aunt, she, since she's like in like a rural part of um, um, Texas back there in Odessa, she, um, it's uh, like cheaper, but mm -hmm. it's, she told me it's like a 1000 box because mm -hmm. she already purchased her house there. So they own it already because she's been here for like 35 years now and like way of living there, she said it's like more cheaper mm -hmm. in Odessa and 
probably because it's like away from the city proper that's why because like i'm asking her some stuff like um like the electricity and everything she told me that it really depends on their consumption but so far it's she's just paying like 50 bucks to 60 bucks like that so it's not that like too like big, big difference compared to me paying in here so pretty much it's more of like um what you call this uh, like uh it's like not that too different with the odessa compared to in plano okay so the that's way. interesting because i think that it it does depend where you are in texas that, you know you, you're gonna have a, a, just generally speaking a more reasonable cost of living than certainly than where i live in california for example but at the same time there are differences within texas itself so i think that's important to um to mention um and i see um uh we have a nash is saying hi mm -hmm. Um, and uh, Jen is from Keller, Texas. So Jen, I'm just curious, what's the cost of living in, in Keller, Texas? Um, because it might be a little different to what Chai is experiencing. Um, Ivan, tell us about the cost of living, oh, the, sorry, not the cost of living, the, about the housing where you are. Oh, we, know. we, we own a house. So um, uh, that's the good news for people who want to come to the United States. Like it's, it's, uh, it's affordable to be able to buy a house. So. Mm -hmm. Like of course the 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 living is more comfortable. Like we started like and we also started living in an apartment. An apartment here are very spacious and um, very livable. Like um, we came from UAE, we have we have like condo condo units. The problem is the the, the parking, and uh, it's uh, it's more congested, smaller place here. When we went to New Mexico, so our apartments basically are bigger. So when we came to Texas. We were like planning to get an apartment however we have a, a rescue dog and um it's it's our dog's fault that we need oh. to buy a house so it's, oh. it's his fault yeah, because he's it's a big dog in new mexico our, our apartment has a backyard so he owns the backyard and mm -hmm. we were looking for a house to rent or an apartment to rent and um we, we couldn't find one because like um because our dog is big so Okay, we said, okay, let's just try to purchase a house. Mm -hmm. As long as you, have, as you have a good credit score, then you'll be able to get, get the house right away. So we bought a house. So what to expect in Texas? Everything is bigger in Texas. Everything is bigger, Everything is in, bigger Texas. in Texas. So basically, <laughs> you live here in a big house. If you're coming from another place, they would say that your house is luxurious, but it's not. It's just average. So they say you live in a mansion, but it's not. It's average. You live in a five-bedroom house here. It's average, and you live in a very big uh, lot, like equivalent to the Philippine lot would be eight hundred uh, square square meters to a, a thousand uh, square meter lot. A big backyard. There's a pool. So those are just like uh, the the things that you can benefit from working in Texas. Like so, if you in your in your days off, like you have your your house, basically, I mean, sometimes you don't need to go out. Mm -hmm. just like all, all of the entertainment is in your house and uh, you have the pool we don't have the pool yet but probably in the future we'll we'll oh that's we'll think, your, we'll think your, about your it next yeah, pool. Your next yeah. Pool, <laughs> uh, yeah the, the 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 price the pricing of the houses depends on the the area as what you said so uh Ke keller texas is more expensive than fort worth uh -huh. Pl plano is more expensive than fort worth the fort worth is also expensive so basically northern texas is more expensive than any other places in texas okay. so the, the, the houses right now are expensive but yes. it, it doesn't mean that it's not affordable it is still affordable because you, you earn a lot here so um the, the 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 culprit for the 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 price right now is um covid it's the same covid so there's no enough supply mm -hmm. everything are expensive the cement is expensive the wood is expensive so Basically, when you're looking at a house before, like a four hundred thousand dollar house, it's now six hundred thousand. So in a, in a span of a year time, it rose up to by by two hundred thousand. But the good thing right now is the because of the COVID, also the the annual percentage rate or the interest rate is is lower. So when we came in here, the annual percentage rate was still high. It was like five point five percent. Right now, it's going three percent. But next year, they said it's it's gonna go up again. But um anyhow either or i mean uh, it's it's still affordable your your salary is still more than enough for you to be able to purchase a house so yeah, yeah we we we'll, um, we're like inviting you to come here yeah 
Everything, everything is everything with your salary. Everything is affordable. You so, can get you can get the car. You can get the house. Like everything. Live, is living the American dream. Yeah. I mean. that's what when you ask. Like, how how are you? Living the dream, like everybody. Living the dream, living the dream. I love it. So, if you want to live the dream, like Ivan and Char, then apply to Kinetics USA to our website, and we'd be happy to help you. Mm -hmm. First step to getting your green card is always the end click. So, refer to the the, the Kinetics Success part because, unfortunately, without the end clicks, you can't you can't do that. And um, I see, and um, Godfrey's asking about Austin. Um, housing in Austin and Nash is asking about rent in Temple. Do you have any advice or any idea about that, Ivan or Charles, about those locations? T Temple is uh, be could be considered as, as county, so the the housing prices are are less. Actually, Temple is nice. They have like I think a big Baylor Temple Level One Trauma Hospital is connected with your with connected. Yes, it so is. So you can you can apply for that. It's a, it's a highly it's a highly highly ranked mm -hmm. hospital. Austin is the the capital of Texas. Mm -hmm. Austin, I would say, is a very competitive place. There's plenty of nurses working in Austin, so the salary rate is lower compared to Northern Texas. So um, because there are plenty of nurses that you need to compete with, so yeah. house, houses is more houses, I guess, would be comparable to Northern Texas. It's it's also a little bit high. It's it's a, 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 don't get me wrong. It's a very nice place, Austin. It's always ranked two or one or out on the top 10 of the best places, best cities to live in the United States. But when you live in a, in a, in a very nice place, the, the exchange is the salary is lower because there's more, more competition. Yeah, that's true. No, that's a, that's a good point. So Gibbs is watching from the Philippines. I hope you're safe. I'm glad that someone posted this. I want to get a glimpse of Texas in general. So thank you again to Ivan and Char for sharing your experiences. I know that you're helping so many nurses by sharing your experience and giving them insight. And that's what Onwards and Upwards is all about, is really to, uh, to share information. And I think to get inspired, as Ivan says, you, welcome, come to Texas <laughs> <laughs> or come anywhere in the United States because we have positions all over the United States. So Marisol is saying, see you soon, Dallas. Um, uh, said, um, someone is saying is uh, Daphne's from Australia, so we have a lot of people watching from all over, and we're so excited to be able to share this information um, with everybody who's watching all over the world. Okay, so last, oh my goodness, we are running out of time. So last topic that we're going to be talking about, we spoke a little bit about the cost of living. Um, I don't know if you want to share anything more just generally about the cost of living, Ivan and Charm. I know we've spoken specifically about that, the housing, but anything about the cost of living in Texas? I mean, cost of living compared to, uh, um, I think it's it's uh, average in Texas, like um, compared to, because we, we'll base it from the salary, like right now we won't be able to like actually feel, feel that cost of living because we're, we're, we're working as travel nurses, so we, we, we earn a lot right now, but like with our regular salary, I mean, still more than enough to be to be able to buy anything that you want as i've said in um in the philippines you need to save you need to be thrifty mm -hmm. so um the, the important thing here is the i mean you have you have you're, you're not rich but at least you have like we have you have, you have enough enough money to buy what you want so when you want to buy an iphone you can just go to at t or to t-mobile okay i'll purchase an iphone i said okay you work as a nurse okay no problem sign right away i want iphone 13 uh, Pro Max, so can it basically easily get it. I mean, it, um, unlike the Philippines, it, it would be difficult. So, right now, like uh, in, inflation wise, so we all know that everything is rising right now. The the um, oil, the gas, and oil is rising. So, hopefully, it's gonna get better next year. But as what I've said, the good thing here is, um, uh, you, you, you earn a lot, so um, salary wise, uh, Texas nurses earns the max would be fifty-two dollars per hour if you are like twenty-five years and above, and um, the entry level would be is probably twenty-seven. So, but still, that that's more than enough when you work. Um, you pay your uh, so what chat discussed earlier. Uh, pay for your house bill, for your for for your internet, for your electricity, 
and uh, you, you still have enough to pay for three cars, four cars. So of course, you don't. We're, we're not like advising you to get. No. To, to, so to, yeah. So I'm glad <laughs> you so said that, Ivan, because I think that's just one word of advice from one immigrant to mm -hmm. future immigrants, and I know Chan Ivan would agree with this. Is best rule of thumb when you come to the United States. I know everybody has worked so hard and really wants to come here and so excited to get here, but it's really important. It's it's really good advice to start low you know start start small don't go out rush out buy houses and three cars and things like that you really want to get used to the system it's very very different when you come here there's a lot of adjusting it can take you six months to a year to really feel like at home am i right chan ivan yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's true you could live, live within your means that that's the downfall actually of filipinos here like in 2008 where mm -hmm. they they bought BMW, Mercedes Benz. We mm -hmm. bought a house this like this when when the economy crashed, and they don't have because they basically live according to their overtime. So yeah. they work six days a week. So mm -hmm. they, their lifestyle, or that, that's what I think we need to know about. So their li their lifestyle, their cost of living, is based from from their six days a week, which is not a, re a regular job. So. Like you, you pay for a lot of mortgages that is more than you or beyond your regular job. So when the market crash, you don't have enough salary to pay for your mortgages. Eventually, they sold everything, everything of their property. So I think that's one thing that we need to watch yeah. out. Like you live within your means, you need to compute. This is your regular salary. Mm -hmm. This is what we need to live within. Yeah, yeah, I think that's very sound advice because you know that everything there's America is a consumer economy, as people say. Um, so there's a lot of very exciting, appealing, shiny things to buy, and you've got to be really careful that you don't overextend yourself and get yourself into financial difficulty um, because you just go out and don't realize how to be financially savvy and how to be financially literate. So it's really important to educate yourself about that. Um, and we've actually done some shows. Um, if anybody's in the forum, we've actually done some shows on financial literacy. So if you haven't seen that, go back and watch that show because I think it's very worthwhile for any new immigrant. And um, Nash is asking, oh, so Gibbs is saying, see you soon in Lubbock, Texas. Yay. We have many hospitals in Lubbock, Texas. So we are really excited um, for anyone going to that location. And um, Nash is asking, is there shopping malls in Texas and especially in Temple? There are many shopping malls in in Texas. Ivan and Cha, any comment on that? Cha, Cha is nearby all the shopping malls, right? <laughs> yeah, actually, it's dangerous, just, Cha. <laughs> yeah, it's dangerous. A lot of you know um, temptations. Yeah. Louis Vuitton, like the signature, you know, signature like um, brands are all in here. Actually, I've just gone one of the malls in here in Dallas. It's the Galleria Mall. So it's really like a huge one. I can compare it with a malls in the Philippines, actually, like huge kind of mall. Mm -hmm. um, it's like uh, I got lost, actually. <laughs> yeah, because it's really huge. It, it, it is because it's like an interconnecting mall. Aside from Galleria Mall, there's like North Storm Mall. It's mm -hmm. like interconnecting to each other. So it's like like a long kind of mall with like three or four floors. Mm -hmm. so I got you. North Storm is part of Galleria. It's like mm. one, one of their main store stores. Like um, uh, I think there's like Macy's. Those are the main stores for yeah. each mall. But don't get disappointed when you come here because the malls <laughs> here are non comparable to the malls in the Philippines. Because okay. so yeah, because Philip, Philip, Philip Philippines is known are known for malls. So basically, the malls in the Philippines are like five to ten times bigger than malls here. So when you go, go in a mall, mall here, you, you will be disappointed. Oh, this is ghost mall. Nobody's here. Like you don't see people. Like in the Philippines, uh, it, it's the like um, they spend their time to go to uh, do a window shopping. So basically, there's just too many people in the Philippines. So if you come from the Philippines, you'll definitely get disappointed with the malls here. So I mean, but that's not one of the the things that you came here for so because yeah. basically everything is available in online right now it's amazon shopping yeah. it's no longer mall it's amazon shopping that that's that is true that is that is even more dangerous <laughs> i don't know about about you char but i it might not be the same size as the malls in the philippines but it's pretty exciting to go to some of the malls yeah. wouldn't you mm -hmm. say <laughs> probably because i came from like kentucky and then the more mall there is like you know not that too huge 
so that's why like i compare back where i came from it's like when i came in here like the most like i got lost really so maybe that's because yeah i came from there so yeah, okay, yeah. but for filipinos what's what's uh famous is the outlet mall so outlet oh mall. yes mm -hmm. so there's we like love the outlet mall <laughs> Oh yeah, like, yeah. Ivan is right. There's like an outlet mall like near here in my place in in Allen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also like in other like uh, near cities. So yeah, they can enjoy those um, outlet so we, malls. To give them an idea, an outlet mall are is is a is a mall for like uh, uh, what they call this like for di discounted um, uh, brand brands, brands like branded yeah. like. So you you'll enjoy it. Man. If yeah, you come like to the United Nike States, yeah, you'll enjoy it. Try and, try and get some bargains. Um, I can't believe we are we are at the hour, but I am going to just take. I'm trying to get through as many questions as possible from the chat. Lots of people are asking questions. Um, so Desiree is saying, would you recommend Texas to young families? What would you say to Desiree? Ivan? Oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, I, I would, yeah. <laughs> as I've said, it, the, the te Texas is big. It, it's a bigger. Um, the, the cities are bigger compared to other states, but it's still it's still laid back. It, it's so big, so there's still a lot, a lot of place for, lots for all of you. Right. There's all of you. lots of families, yeah. lots of wonderful opportunities uh -huh. for families, and everybody are welcome to come here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Nash is asking, how is life different in the USA and the UAE as a nurse, as it is better and less stressful? How would you say is it different in the USA as opposed to the UAE? Oh, I mean that that's far far different. I mean, you you I mean you you'll get to enjoy the place like the malls are big, like everything are luxurious, like um, sports cars everywhere, Lamborghinis everywhere. But um, uh, opportunity wise, it's very far. In UAE, you'll be nurse one, staff nurse forever. I mean, um, you you you'll be eventually uh, like uh, promoted, but it would take forever. So in the United States everything this is what what i would say i, mean, I, I, I don't want to don't get me wrong I mean, in ue basically the salary is based from your passport so when your passport is this and that you earn more in the united states basically like all are equal so it doesn't matter what your race is it doesn't matter what your passport is you're gonna be paid accordingly according to what the book says yeah exactly and that's also the advantage of direct hire Mm -hmm. Kinetics USA offer direct hire opportunities is mm -hmm. where you will get paid the same as an American nurse with equivalent years of experience. I, I agree. I got I got surprised when my friend uh, yeah. told me about the good news with Connectix yeah. and he told me, yeah. Ivan, is this a good salary? He said, yes, of course. That's uh, equivalent to a local nurse here. He said, <laughs> go, and I, I told him, go and go and get it. Let, let them process your papers. Good and advice. We'll We'll see you in Dallas soon. Yeah, that's very good advice, Ivan, because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, nurses do such a wonderful job um, and serve so many people, care for so many people. I think that's the one real advantage of America is that, and especially direct hire in America, is that you feel valued and you feel appreciated for the job that you do, because it's not an easy job. Um, okay, last question that we're going to take is from Shamlin. Oh, no, sorry, is... Um, from Daniel, is there an outdoor activities in Texas? Temple specifically, like mountain climbing or or the like? Any comment on that one? I have an old child. There's like Yeah, there's like yeah. Actually there's like a lot of like hiking place in here in Texas. It's everywhere. Outdoor if you're like into sports, there's like bowling, there's like basketball indoor or outdoor. It's just everywhere. Like what I've said, here in Texas, um people are very active ones. They love to like jog, hike. So if you are into those kind of activities, you will love it in here in Texas because it's everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and I think that's also due to the weather because it's great weather. It, mm -hmm. It's conducive to a great outdoor lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Texas is plain, so there, there are not that much mountains to hike. Um, if, but you can hike in the park and there's like plenty of uh, lakes to go in. I mean, if you enjoy outdoor activities. But as I said, I mean, uh, the good thing here is you can schedule your days off and your days work. And if you want to go mountain uh, hiking, um, in El Paso, there's like a 
but that's far from temple. So when saying temple, I guess what you find temple are basically more on um, uh, lakes. So, but you can easily go to other states to do mountain hiking. That's easy to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and you will, you will travel and and be able to show your wonderful holiday vacation pictures like Chan Ivan just did today on the show. Okay, so thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for all the great questions. Um, I know that um, Ivan and Cha, everybody is so grateful to you for taking your time to share your experience about what it's like living as a nurse in Texas. Um, all of the aspects of living in Texas, many nurses overseas dream of coming to America. Maybe they've heard about Texas, but really didn't know much about it. So the show today, I think, has been very informative. And we really love the fact that you have paid it forward and helped other nurses today. So that is uh, come to the end of the show. Um, I see that Shamlin is asking, explain about the exam and procedures to work as a staff nurse in um, in Texas or in the United States. So, um, Shamlin, please go back to our success path. Um, it is on our website, Kinetics USA, and that will give you all of the different steps that you need to take in order to come and live and work in the United States. Um, the first step of the success path is passing your NCLEX exam. Um, so um, that is going to be step number one. And of course, Char and Ivan have done that and are now living the American dream. Um, I know we also have some questions about Kinetics Initiatives, um, so I want to just share about that. Um, so um, we have a free IELTS scholarship review course for all Kinetics USA nurses. We have an NCLEX scholarship. This is a review course for selected global nurses all over the United all over the world, um, where we pay for you to do a review course. This is for selected nurses only. We also have our thousand dollar referral fee. This is if you refer a nurse with NCLEX, and this is a promotion. It is extended until December 31st. So just two more weeks on that promotion. If you know somebody who has passed the NCLEX, um, please refer them to Kinetics USA um, and you will be eligible for the $1,000 referral program. Please listen to our podcast. We're in the top 10% of podcasts worldwide, Nursing in America. Um, we have a nurse aid program. We have our show. Please watch us every week. We have different topics um, and we also have allied uh, uh, positions that we can have available to you as well. If you are interested to come to the United States, you can also go to our website and get our free download. This is only from Kinetics USA. This is free information for any nurse that is looking to come to the United States. And it is a guidebook that tells you information on all states and everything that you need to know about coming to live and work, the cost of living, the housing, the laws, the culture, activities, et cetera. So this is free information and share that with your friends. And this is the last show of Onwards and Upwards this year. And so I just take this opportunity to wish everybody a happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. And we hope that, uh, that the, the year ahead will be only good things for everybody um, to come. So thank you, Ivan, and thank you, Cha, thank for you. sharing your thank story. Happy holidays. And as see, we say, maybe we'll see you around, Cha. Just like basically we're just neighbors, so it's probably. Oh, yeah. We can just, you know, meet up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to meet up. We're going to have a holiday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. It was a fun hour. Ivan and Cha really loved speaking to you to you both today. I know that you've helped so many nurses. And as we say, onwards and upwards. Thank you, everybody. Thank you Happy for joining holidays. us. Bye-bye. Thank you.